Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to present exercises with union, intersection, and equality of sets. The first exercise is going to be the same as the one that was on a former video. And it says, let A and B be sets, then A union B is equal to B union A, and also A intersection B is equal to B intersection A. If you haven't tried this exercise and you want to try this exercise on, on your own, uh, feel free to do so. You can pause the video at this moment. Also, if you want to share your solution, uh, feel free to comment down below. Uh, right now, I'm going to uh, start with a certain proof. So if you want to see a certain approach for solving this exercise, I'll continue watching the video. Uh, for this exercise, uh, we can start with the first part. The first part uh, asks to prove the equality of sets uh, being A union B and B union A. And this is going to be proven on this proof by equivalence. And so we can start by S in A union B. After this, uh, we can use the definition of union. So if and only if S is in A or S is in B. After this, uh, it is going to be used a uh, logical equivalence, and uh, that being if and only if S is in B or S is in A. And pretty much what has been done is that the terms uh, around the OR have been interchanged. So we are commuting the terms around the OR, and this is a logical equivalence. And right now, again, we can use uh, the definition of union. So this is if and only if. S is in B union A. This already gives an entire argument uh, connected by equivalences that starts with S in A union B and S and ends with S in B union A. And this would already prove the equality of the sets. Being A union B is equal to B union A, this would be all for part one. Uh, pretty much the only things that were used were the definition of union and the logical equivalence of the commutativity of four or the commutativity of disjunctions. Uh, part two is going to be very similar. And uh, in this case, we want to prove the equality of A intersection B and B intersection A. And it is also going to be proven by equivalence. So it is fine to start with S in A intersection B. And after this, use the definition of intersection. So S in A and S in B, if and only. Uh, after that, it is also going to be used a uh, logical equivalence. So if and only if S in B and S in A. Uh, this logical equivalence is very similar to the one before. It is just the commutativity of the connector and. So we can swap the terms around the connector and. Uh, but moreover, this logical equivalence uh, is pretty much a uh, fundamental critical type of thought in the sense that it can be found uh, pretty much everywhere and pretty much everywhere is a fundamental claim. And so just for you to have that in mind. And okay, after this point, uh, we can use again the definition of intersections. So if and only if S is in B intersection A. And this would give us uh, an argument connected by equivalences which would give us the equality that we want, which is A intersection B is equal to B intersection A. And this would be for part two, and this would be for the entire exercise one. And now we can move on to exercise two. And in this case, we have the sets A, B, and C. And now we want to prove that A union B union C is equal to A union B, and then union with C, and also that A intersection with B intersection C is equal to A intersection B with the intersection C. So a little bit long, and also the proof is going to be a little bit long, but that's just because we are dealing with a pretty general uh, claim. Um, if you want to try this exercise, uh, feel free to do it on, on your own, and uh, you can pause the video right now. And if you want to share your solution, uh, feel free to do so down below in the comments. So, okay, at this moment, uh, let's start with part.
let's start with part one. So for part one, again, we want to prove an equality of sets and it is going to be proven by equivalences. Uh, also just to have uh, at our disposal, I have laid down the definitions for B union C and also the definitions for A union B. Or at least in a in equivalence form. So okay, we start with S in A union with B and union C. And just by the definition of union, this is if and only if S is in A or S is in B union C. And now we are going to use a logical step where we are going to use uh, the first definition and just to have it joint in our argument. And now we are going to use the definition of S in B union C if and only if S is in B or S is in C in order to be able to substitute the definition or the equivalence of S in B union C. And this is going to give us the next logical equivalence, which is if and only if S is in A or uh, the parentheses are going to be important, at least just for the formalism, S in B or S in C. And okay, a little bit lengthy the argument, but everything is fine. And now from this point onward, we can use just a direct logical equivalence which is going to be the associativity of this union. So if and only if S in A or S in B, or we close the parentheses, S in C. Pretty lengthy, but it's just based on logical equivalences. And at this point, now we are going to use the second definition and join it to a logical equivalence. Uh, keep in mind that the idea in here is that it is a logical step, the possibility of adding arg of, of adding statements to the argument. That, that is what I'm uh, doing pretty much in here. But I mean, that's just excessive formalism. In general, that's not necessary, or at least it is understood. Um, and OK, we have already the definition for the union of A and B, and now we can substitute that S in A or S in B is just S in A union B. And that is what we do. So right now we have if and only if S in A union B or S in C, and right now we are completely free to just use the definition of union. And so uh, we are going to have something, but before that, uh, let's pause, let's pause. Okay, relax. And okay, I'm guessing that uh, you have relaxed. Maybe five seconds have passed. Okay, so we now, now go back to it. And okay, this would be if and only if S is in A union B union C. And we have the entire argument for uh, our equality, which is all connected equivalences. Okay, now we can move on to part number two. It, it is going to be very similar. We again have an equality that we are going to prove by equivalences. And again, we are going to be using uh, the equivalences of S in B intersection C and, A, and S in A intersection B. But okay, we start with S in A intersection with B intersection C. We use the definition of intersection, if and only if S is in A and S is in B intersection C. We drag on the first definition or the first equivalence. And we use this one to have the logical equivalence of substituting the definition or the equivalence of S in B intersection C, which is going to be S in B and S in C. And now we are going to use associativity of conjunction. So if and only if S is in A and S is in B, we close the parentheses and S in C. 
and we again join with the second equivalence that we just have apart. <laughs> and this is going to give us uh, the possibility of replacing or substituting that S in A and S in B is just S in A intersection B. And I will use the definition of intersection. So if and only if S in A intersection B, intersection with C. And this already is an entire argument connected only by equivalences. So this already gives us the equality that we want. A intersection with B intersection C is equal to A intersection B with intersection C. Okay, moving on to exercise number three. And now let A, B, and C be set. Then A with the union of an intersection is going to be an intersection of unions. Ah. Uh, keep an eye on the pattern. And now also A intersected with a union is going to be the union of intersections. Also keep an eye on the pattern. If you want to prove this exercise on your own, uh, feel free to do so. You can also write your solution on the comments if you want. If you want to see a certain approach for solving this exercise, I'll continue watching the video. And okay, so we start with part one. So it is also going to be an equality of sets that is going to be proven by equivalences. Uh, I'm going to gloss over the steps that are going to be pretty similar to the ones of exercise number two, pretty much those that just drag on uh, extra arguments that are already known. But okay, just keep a watch on those. So we have S in A union B intersection C. This using the definition of union is if and only if S is in A or S is in B intersection C. And okay, at this moment, we want to replace S in B intersection C with S in B and S in C that would need us to drag on the, that part, that equivalence. Well, okay, we just gloss over that, which is definition of intersection and logical equivalence. So if and only if S is in A or S is in B and S is in C. And now we are going to use the logical equivalence of distribution of OR over AND. This is kind of hard stuff uh, or advanced stuff, but nothing too strange. So, okay, uh, distribution, like uh, the product over a sum. Uh, so if and only if S is in A or S is in B and S in A or S in C. And again, we are going to want to replace those parentheses by unions. So technically, we just drag on uh, the definition of union and logical equivalences. And so this is if and only if S is in A union B and S is in A union C. And now we can use the standard definition of intersection without any trouble. And so this just gives us if and only if S is in A union B intersection with A union C. Uh, this is an entire argument only connected by logical equivalences. Remember that definitions are logical equivalences. So this gives us the equality that we want. And we are done for part one. So now for part two is going to be very similar. And we are just going to interchange what we did with intersection and union and with an and or. So as in A intersection B union C, we use the definition of intersection. So if and only if S is in A and S is in B union C. And now we want to replace S in B union C with S is in B or S is in C. And we just do that. Those are a couple of logical steps, but we gloss over that. And so if and only if S is in A and S is in B or S is in C in parentheses. And now again, we can have that a uh, conjunction distributes over disjunction. So, and distributes over or. So now we are going to have if and only if S is in A and S is in B, or S is in A and S is in C. And also right now we want to use another uh, logical equivalence 
and replace the S's in A and S's in B by an intersection, as well in the second parenthesis. And so we just do that. So we have if and only if S is in A intersection B or S is in A intersection C. And here we can use just the typical uh, definition of union. So if and only if S is in A intersection B, union A intersection C, this is our entire argument uh, connected by equivalences. So this gives us the quality that we want. And this would be it for part number two of exercise three. And this would solve exercise number three. Okay, moving on for exercise number four. Uh, pretty much it's just the same as exercise number three. It's just having the distribution on the other side of the operations. And okay, you may be thinking, oh, well, do we need to do the entire process as in exercise three? Well, it's a possibility. You can try that. Uh, that's not what I'm going to do as a proof, but you can feel free to try it on your own. Uh, you can also comment on your solution. But okay, right now I'm going to keep some kind of a different type of proof. And if you want to see the certain approach, continue watching the video. So for part one, uh, we are just going to start with the quality. So let's a intersection B union C, and this is going to be equal thanks to exercise number one to C union A intersection B. And now we can use exercise number three and distribute the C. So we have C union A intersection C union B. And okay, we can leave this aside a little bit, but we also know by exercise number one that C union A is equal to A union C and that C union B is equal to B union C. And so we can use all of this information, just replacing the genius, and this gives us the equality that we want. Uh, pretty short, right? Uh, well, it's just because we already have a lot of tools from the exercise that were before all of this. And for part number two, we also have plenty of tools. We can start with A union B intersection with C, and we have that this is going to be equal to the C intersection A union B thanks to exercise number one, and we can now distribute thanks to exercise number three. So, okay, we distribute C intersection A union C intersection B, and we also know by exercise number one the commutativity of intersections. So, C intersection A is equal to A intersection C, and C intersection B is equal to intersection C, and now we can just replace the inequality, the equalities that we want. and Okay, this is just going to give us the quality that we were looking for at the beginning. So this would be it for part number two. So yeah, this is a short way of doing exercise number four, uh, just because we already have a lot of information from the previous exercise. So I, I hope you liked it. Uh, or otherwise, let me know. Also, let me know if you like the video. Uh, you can leave me questions or comments. Uh, know if you want me to treat a certain topic in which you are interested, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching.